Yeah, so the next speaker we have is Randall. Uh, he runs the developer relations and community at Sneak, where he works on security research, development, and education. Uh, in his spare time, Randall writes articles and gives talks advocating for security best practices. Randall also builds and contributes to various open source security tools. Um, and random, Randall's realms of expertise include Python, JavaScript, Go, web security, cryptography, and infrastructure security. Uh, and Randall's been writing software for over 20 years and has built a number of popular API services and open source tools. And he'll be presenting on an introduction to Passetto tokens. Uh, Welcome, Randall. So hey. excited for this talk. <laughs> I, I haven't heard about uh, Passetto, so I'm definitely looking to learn something new over here as well. Uh, and you've got your slides, so I'll add them to the live stream. Also, I know, Surya, you've got to head off, so I just don't want to say thank you so much for co-hosting and, you know, adding your operations lens on security as well. And hopefully, you know, you this has been valuable, but thank you for co-hosting with me as well. Thanks, Shelby, and thanks, everyone. Thank <laughs> And thank you both. All right, so let's have some fun, everyone. Um, this is a lightning talk. So I am gonna talk extraordinarily fast, but feel free to write questions down in the chat. I'll try to get back to them when I can, but I'm gonna try to keep this to 15 minutes or less, ideally. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about Pacetto. And what is Pacetto? What does it mean? Well, Pacetto stands for Platform Agnostic Security Tokens. Now, hopefully you've heard of JSON Web Tokens before. These are basically the upgraded uh, version of JSON web tokens. Now, I don't know about you, but for the last week or so, I've been playing around a lot with AI. And one of the cool things I learned you can do is you can actually ask the AI, what are Pesetto tokens? And brilliantly, it'll actually say, hey, Pesetto, which stands for Platform Agnostic Security Tokens, is a secure and compact way of storing and transmitting data. Pesetto tokens are designed to be easy to use and implement while also providing a high level of security. They're based on JSON web tokens and use modern cryptographic techniques to ensure data stored in Pesetto tokens is secure and tamper-proof. And guess what? The AI is totally spot on right, but it can't do as good a job as I'm about to do walking through the whole thing. So let's get into it. Um, so also I had an amazing introduction. Thank you so much. Uh, like, you know, like the host said, I'm Randall. I work at Sneak. I do DevRel and community. I do a lot of security and building stuff. Um, you can learn more about me if you check me out on Twitter or follow the sneak accounts. But let's get right into this. So first of all, what's Pacetto? Well, Pacetto, you can think of it as really just a blob of JSON data that is that can be securely transmitted over the internet. That's really all Pacetto is. It's a, it's a, a standard that allows you to do this. Um, one thing you do need to know about Pacettos, however, is that they're always authenticated. And what does that mean? Well, basically what it means is that every single Pacetto is always going to be cryptographically signed. Now. What do you use Pesetos for? Well, essentially what you use them for is to prove that a certain piece of JSON data can be trusted. And it turns out this is a really useful thing when you're building applications that work over the internet. Now, what does it mean to have signatures, to have data that's trusted and all these things? Well, think of it like a passport. So when you have a passport, passports have information about you inside of them, right? So I'm Randall, so I have a name, I have a height, I have eye color. All these attributes about me or claims about me are documented in my passport. And when I go to the airport, the airport guards will check my passport and they're going to look at it. And the reason that they trust the data inside of the passport is because they trust the U.S. government. I'm a U.S. citizen. They know what the stamp on my passport looks like. And so therefore they say, we trust this. Now, the only difference between a passport and a Pesetto is that A, uh, Pesetos can only be used a single time, so you can't reuse them like you can a passport. And B, they have a, a very short lifespan, a very short duration of existence, unlike a passport, which in the US lasts for about 10 years. Now, a minute ago, I said that every Pesetto is cryptographically signed. But what does that mean? And why is it important? <laughs> well, think of it like this. So let's say I write you a letter. I actually type out a letter on a piece of paper, and at the bottom, I sign the letter. I put it in the mail, I address it to your house, and I send it to you. Well, when you get this letter and open it up, if you look at it, you might be reading this letter and saying, hey, you know, this letter was typed out, so I can't see the handwriting. And I don't know if Randall actually sent this to me or not, right? Because it's typed. You, there's no, like, signature on it. But the part that 
uh, builds the trust is when you look down at the bottom and you actually see my written signature and you say to yourself, okay, well, I know who Randall is and I know what his signature looks like and I trust Randall. So therefore I trust that this information is valid because I trust Randall. I know what his signature looks like. This was cl clearly signed by him and it conveys trust. This is the exact same thing that happens in the digital world just using cryptography. So with that being said, what do Pesetos look like under the hood? Like, what are they actually, right? And basically, they look like this. They're these long, jarbled uh, strings, but they have components that, that, make, uh, you know, that make them special. So first of all, the first property of Pesetos is that all the actual JSON data and like text inside of these are, is always base64 encoded and URL safe. This means you can safely pass them in things like URL, query string parameters, and stuff like that. Secondly, all Pesetos have three, sometimes four parts that are period delimited. So the first component of a Pesetto is the version number, which identifies which version of the Pesetto specification you're using. Now, as of today, there's actually four versions of the specification. I'm showing you an older version, but they're all basically, you know, very, very little differences between them. The second uh, section of a Pesetto is called the purpose. And what this refers to is either public or local. And we'll talk about these more in a moment, but there's two ways to use Pesetto tokens depending on your, your model, like where you need to send them and what sort of security considerations you, you have. The third section is the interesting bit. This is called the payload. And this is just base64 encoded, sometimes encrypted and cryptographically signed JSON data. So this is where the interesting JSON data lives essentially. And then finally, there's this optional fourth part, which is a footer, which can be anything. So this is some base64 encoded data. It could just be text. It could be a string. It could be non-existent. It could be a blob of JSON data. It's not really well defined. So what's inside of Pesetos? Well, first of all, you know, like we said before, it's just JSON data. And so you have claims embedded in these things. And the way, or sorry, in the Pesetto specification, we call them claims, but essentially each one of these JSON keys is a claim. So this Pesetto has an ID claim, an email claim, a permissions claim. That's just sort of the, the shorthand terminology we use. Now there are a few reserved claims in Pesetto's that are things that like you always, yeah, or sorry, that if, if you're gonna use them, you have to use them according to these definitions. And there's a number of these. So for example, there's the ISS claim, which it's called the issuer. And that basically says who created this token. So it's really useful when you're doing certain types or building certain types of apps. Um, there's also an expiration claim, an issued act claim, et cetera. So there's a lot of these core things you can use to properly communicate with people using the same standard. So what are the different types of Pesetos? Well, the default, the go-to, the one that's the most common and popular is the local Pesetto. And so this is the purpose uh, thing I showed you earlier. Now, local Pesettos are really cool because A, they're symmetric, which means they use shared key cryptography. Now, we're gonna talk about this more in a moment and show examples, but local Pesettos are great because if you have a system where you can securely store a secret key or, or one or more systems, this is the one you wanna use. And the reason why is because Local Pesetos are also, are also encrypted. And so that means the JSON data that goes inside of them can never be read by anyone without a secret key. They're also really simple to use and easy to manage. And so that's another benefit. Now, the other type of Pesetto you have are public Pesetos. Now, as the name implies, these are asymmetric and they use public key cryptography, hence the name. Now, public Pesetos are not encrypted. So there's no way to encrypt the data, which means that anyone who can get a copy of this token can actually see the data inside of it. Now that's okay for certain things, but if you need encryption, then you have to use local Pesetos. And then finally, public key cryptography in pretty much every circumstance is relatively complicated. And so that's you know sort of a trade-off of, of using these types of Pesetos. So how do local Pesetos work? Well, the main idea is you have two things you need to care about. First of all, you have a blob of JSON data. And second of all, you have a secret key, like a passphrase essentially. And when you combine those two things, you create a Pesetto that's encrypted, like we said before. And so what that means is if an, if an attacker gets a hold of this Pesetto and tries to inspect it and see what's in there, they're not gonna be able to see anything. So they're sort of out of luck unless they have this key. Now, the way this works is the secret key is needed to both create the Pesetto and do the encryption, but that same key is also needed to decrypt the Pesetto. And so that's why we call it shared key cryptography, because both parties, the party encrypting the data 
and decrypting the data needs to share that same key. And so usually what that means is it only works in trusted systems. Like if you're building uh, applications on an internal network and you have like trust between your, your platforms, that's one way to do this. So what are some use cases? How would you actually use this in the real world? Well, a really great example is having a website with a download server. So for example, maybe you're running a video course website and you're teaching people uh, some courses. Like for example, uh, one of our presenters is gonna uh, runs the Web Security Academy and has a bunch of students and they do some amazing stuff. And um, maybe he wants to sell videos for his courses. And so this could be a way to do that. So in this scenario, what would happen is the user would say, hey, website, I wanna download this, this MP4 file. And then what's going to happen is the website is going to validate this request and say, okay, well, you're logged in, you, you bought the course, you, you can download it. And so we're going to redirect you to the download server to download a file. And the way they're going to do that is by, first of all, both of these services need to have this shared secret key. Second of all, the www service is going to generate this Paceto token and include some data inside of it. So it might include things like a purchase ID, the permissions that this user has, like they're authorized to download video one, video two, video three. Um, and then they're going to redirect from this service to the download service. And in the query string parameters for that request, they're going to include both the Paceto token as a URL query string parameter, as well as the video file that the user wants to download, the file name. Now, the download server is gonna receive this request, parse out that token and file parameter. It's gonna decrypt the token using the secret key, it's going to verify the purchase ID. It's going to verify the permissions and say, okay, well, the user wants to download video one and they have the permission defined here and we trust that. And so therefore we trust that they can do this. And then finally, the download service is going to let the user download the file. So this is an example of how this can be used in the real world. Now note, this token is being used a single time only and it only exists for a short period of time during the redirect. That is important from a security perspective. Now, what about public pesetos? How do they work? Well, in this scenario, you have three things you care about now. You have the same JSON data and you have the, uh, so you still have a secret key, we call it a private key, but you also have this other key called a public key. And the public key is meant to be shared publicly. And so there's like, there's nothing you have to keep secret there. The only thing you have to keep secret is the private key. And the way public pesetos work is you create the public peseto by combining your JSON data with your private key. So you don't need your public key to actually create the, the Pesetto, you only need your private key. Now, if an attacker gets a copy of this Pesetto, like I said before, because it's public, it, the data is not encrypted, and that means an attacker can read all the JSON data. So one thing you wanna keep in mind when using public Pesettos is again, whatever JSON data you put in there should not be super sensitive information. Now, in, in when you're using public any form of public key cryptography, the private key is what you use to create a token and the public key is what you use to validate that the token is valid and hasn't been tampered with or, or changed in any way. So the public key is used for validation and integrity. It's like looking at that signature, that stamp on your passport, but it's not encrypting anything. Now, how do you use, use these in the real world? A great example is website authentication. So many of you might be familiar with OAuth or OpenID Connect. Paceto is a really great use case for initializing these flows. So for example, a user might go to a website and say, hey, I want to log in, get redirected to an authorization server. The authorization server is going to say, hey, what's your username and password? You know, the user gives it to them. The authorization server is then going to use its private key to generate a Paceto token for the user. Then it's going to transmit that, that public token to uh, back to the web server. The web server is then going to parse that token out validate it using the public key of the authorization server. And note that in this scenario, the private key only needs to be known by the authorization server. No other parties need to know about it, which makes it particularly great in these scenarios where you don't have trusted web applications talking to each other. And, uh, and then, yeah, finally, uh, you would then create a server-side session that's secure and keep the user logged in. So this is like a good example for uh, how to use public uh, pesetos. So, why are Pesetos better than JSON web tokens? And why were we talking about this? Well, the way you should think about Pesetos is that they're essentially like JSON web tokens, the good parts, right? So it takes a lot of things from the JSON web token spec and gets rid of the bad stuff and just leaves a little bit of the optimized stuff that helps you. Now, in a really quick nutshell, you might be wondering, well, I've heard a lot about JSON web tokens. They're used all over the place. What's wrong with them? 
And the answer is that, first of all, they're really widely misused. And so people use them in all sorts of security contexts that cause problems. Um, secondly, they force implementations to strictly process the algorithm header, which can cause forgery issues. Um, third, there's a lot of poor cryptography choices that were made uh, by the designers of the specifications that allow you as a developer to sort of shoot yourself in the foot. So for example, using RSA with PKS makes you vulnerable to padding oracle attacks. Um, using RSA with OAEP padding um, is bad because cryptographers have been rec recommending people move away from RSA for years now due to complexity and potential vulnerabilities. Um, using elliptic curve Duffy Hellman with the Weierstrass, Weierstrass curves introduces risk of invalid curve attacks that would allow attackers to steal secret keys. And then in some scenarios, the JSON web token specifications just allow you to use the wrong cryptographic choices entirely, which is like a massive issue. And so basically, Paceto was created to fix a lot of these issues. So how do you get started? Well, if you want to check it out, you can go to the website paceto.io and play around with it. Um, there's an RFC. There's lots of developer libraries and a lot of different programming languages. There's great articles linked to there and presentations. There's tons of useful resources. If you prefer watching videos, definitely go on YouTube and search Paceto. You'll see some of my talks and some other people that have given uh, a lot more research on the subjects. And um, yeah. Thank you so much. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to learn some more fun security stuff or just uh, hang out with me, I have my personal site linked. I have the Sneak website linked. My Twitter, Sneak's Twitter. Follow us everywhere. And yo, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Randall. That was really, really good. Uh, I didn't expect anything less, but that was really nice. And I always love the artwork that you've got. Uh, but I think um, it was really easily put through as well. As you said, it's just uh, JSON uh, web tokens without the bad parts. So I think I'm just going to remember. Like That's my takeaway for what, uh, what it is. So thank you for putting that through. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look if there are any questions that have come through, but otherwise, you know, Randall's done an amazing job of plugging in all his socials. So I know he loves talking about this stuff. So hit him up with any questions that he do have, but thank you so much for joining us, Randall. And thanks so much for the talk. Thank you. We're looking forward to hanging out later. Take care.